What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the best way to manage your component libraries inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. By the way, stick around at the end of this video because I'm going to show you an awesome tool that I've built in order to help me completely avoid rework with a lot of these components in my models. All right, so one of the most frustrating things for me when working in SketchUp is rework. And so what I mean is let's say that we were to add cabinets to this space right here. Well, I've added cabinets in a ton of models in the past, but in this situation, say that I was to come in here and model these cabinets out manually, right? So I would start just by kind of um, blocking out the width of each one of the cabinet boxes right here. And then I would have to model out all the parts and pieces. I'm, I might even like extrude this and then start kind of like modeling the side pieces and things like that. But it's a whole lot of extra work because I've already done this a bunch of different times. And so what I highly, highly recommend is as you create projects, you need to start creating component library files. And so more on this in a minute, but what that basically means is that means that you should be saving things to reuse across different projects. So like, for example, you probably have cabinets at typical widths that you use over and over again. So what I highly recommend is that you start saving them somewhere. So instead of you having to come in and manually model out things like this cabinet box, instead you can just add in cabinets that you've already created like this. It just saves you so much time. Um, and so we'll talk about some strategies for doing that in a second, but I just wanted to introduce you to the idea because notice how here, all I have to do is kind of like drop this in place. And this cabinet, for example, is actually dynamic, which more about this library in a minute, but I can basically take this and adjust how big it is. And it's going to dynamically adjust so that I don't have to model these manually. If you want to take this even further, Inside the SketchUp Essentials course, I've added a brand new dynamic component library for cabinets, doors, and windows. You can drop them in, quickly resize, swap out different styles. It's very easy. Plus, you get the full training, live calls, and community support included in the course so you're never stuck. This is available for annual members of the course. And quick heads up, the course is on sale through Tuesday, September 2nd at 1159 p.m. So if saving hours and getting great results sounds good, Check the link below and join us while the sale's on. And so there's a few different ways to manage things like this. Um, so the first is every time you use a component, you could just save the model in a folder. So like, for example, I have saved out different models that I like to use into a folder right here. So for example, if I look in here, I have multiple different tables that I like to use. Depending on the way your computer works, you may or may not be able to see a preview like this, but the the way that's built into SketchUp to do this is going over into the components section of your tray, clicking the little drop down right here and clicking the option for open or create a collection. And so basically you give it a folder, you tell it to select a folder, and then everything that's in that folder is going to show up over here on the right hand side of the page. And let's see, you can make the thumbnails larger by clicking on large thumbnails, but they're not really like super fantastic, right? You can kind of see what these are um, and you can bring them into your model. So say I wanted to add a table, I could just click on this and bring it into SketchUp. That's a valid way of doing this. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of this for a few different reasons. So first off, I can't really see these objects very well. Um, they don't really get super large over here. Second, it doesn't really like maintain that folder in here. So it doesn't like save that across multiple different sessions. So I have to like do this over and over again. I'm not a massive fan of managing my components this way. Um, so there are options for things like extensions. So for example, Component Finder is either built into Flex Tools or you can just download Component Finder for free. And it's a great tool for saving those different folders in here like this. And then you can actually see what those different models are and you can bring them into SketchUp. So say I wanted some different tables or chairs or doors, I can click in here, I can click on this object and I could bring it in directly from Component Finder. And I'll link to Component Finder in the notes down below. Where I like Component Finder is I like it for things like chairs or tables or things where a separate model file might get super big. You know, so if you have like hundreds of chairs and tables and things like that that you reuse over and over again, um, then that SketchUp file could get pretty big. So I don't like to keep a bunch of those really heavy things in folders. So for something like that, I really like 
component finder um, for managing kind of heavier geometry. But then there's another way that I like to manage my libraries, which is actually creating these model boneyard files. And I like this for a couple different reasons. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up, uh, we'll open up my dynamic window library. Um, more on this in a second, but this is the library that I'm using for things like windows if I need to put them in openings. And what it is, is it's basically a file that has all of these dynamic windows saved so that I can come in here and pick up whatever I want. Now in this situation, these are actually dynamic. So it's not a massive deal that I have all of these in here. This is more a good visual. But what I do is you can actually have multiple different SketchUp windows open at the same time, which if you didn't know that, you can just right click on SketchUp right here and just open a new SketchUp window and then open whatever that file is. And then you'll have multiple different SketchUp models. So you can kind of see it right here. I have multiple different SketchUp models right here. But then all you have to do is just do a control C and then go back into your model and do a control V in order to paste this, right? And in this situation, I've now got a window that I can just drop in this opening. And so for me, I really like the model boneyards because they let me see everything that's contained inside of my model collection. Um, so I can actually see the different styles and things like that, and I can use it to keep things organized. I'm personally not a massive fan of going into something like um, Component Finder and then just like scrolling through different things. Like if you look at my cabinet library, for example, um, you can definitely see what these cabinets are. I, I, I like being able to go in here and just pick pick up something based on the style, right? I can like look at these. I can see what the drawers are going to look like for each style. I can see what the wall cabinets are going to look like, things like that. So I prefer having this right here just because it's something that really makes my life a lot easier and I don't have to manage a whole bunch of like linking back to folders and things like that. And so I have model boneyard files for my doors, my windows, my cabinets right now, and I can just go pick those things out really easy. So I kind of prefer that personally, because it's also something that's really easy for me to add to. And I can kind of remember what I've done, right? I can look at this and be like, okay, I've got all these vertical sliding windows. I've got all these uh, vertical simple windows. I've got the horizontal sliding windows. I can just go through and I can look at these and I can be like, okay, so these taller ones have more window panes in them than the narrower ones. So I can kind of see all of those and to just pick out whatever I need. So I prefer using the model boneyards whenever possible, just because it's really just a better experience for me in general. And so let's say that you did want to create a model boneyard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file right here. And so what I like about the idea behind the model boneyards is you can just start by creating kind of a surface here. So we'll say this surface is gonna be 30 feet by 30 feet right here. And I like to provide kind of this plane that I can put things on. So I might make it six inches deep right here and just select the whole thing and make it a group. Well, now I'm at a point where I can start adding things to this. So let's say that we did have a project and let's say we didn't have these windows. Let's say that we ended up bringing in some Marvin windows. So I'm going to kind of move these off to the side, but let's say that we use some dynamic components from the 3D warehouse. So we're just going to do a Marvin. Whoops. window search and I just need to pick up one of these that's actually from Marvin. So say it was this one right here. So say that you liked this window and you downloaded it in. So I'm just going to load this directly into my SketchUp model right here. And let's say that I was to adjust it to fit on the wall. Now, a lot of these dynamic components in the 3D warehouse are very powerful, but they're also kind of like that they have too many options in my opinion. Like I don't, it's like for this one, I'm going to go ahead and scale it over. This one has a ton of different options in it. I'm not like the world's biggest fan of these all the time just because it has so much stuff, but say you like this window. And so, and so say that I have this window that I like, and I want to go ahead and I want to put it in a model boneyard. Well, I could just do the same thing where I open up my model boneyard file um, in the other window. And I could even put these side by side just so we can see them right here. But what I would do is I would take this window and I would just copy it here. I would just paste it here. And I would just stand it up using the rotate tool. So now I've got this window in here like this and I can move it up. And now all I have to do is save this boneyard file. So I could save this as dynamic. So I could just save this as window boneyard example 
right here, but now I've got this Boneyard file. And now all I have to do is as I work across different projects, I just have to be diligent in what I put in this library, right? So say that I wanted to put these windows over here. I could just create a copy of it right here and I could rotate this this way. And one of the things that I like doing, and this might just kind of like fit with the way that my brain organizes things, but one of the things that I really like doing, and this needs to be on the ground. So we're going to move this down a little bit. One of the things that I like doing is keeping these organized and also labeled. So in this case, what I would do is I would probably not use the 3D text tool. I like using TomTom's editable 3D text which you can find in the extension warehouse. But basically what this does is this allows me to add 3D text. So for this window, or I, I might not even label the windows themselves, or I might, but in this case, I might just call this sliding windows vertical right here. And you could even create a scene for your vertical windows. So you could do a view animation, add scene. We could call this vertical sliding. Well, then if you decided that you wanted to also save some horizontal windows, what we could do is we could pick these up and make a copy right here. And with that 3D text editor, what you need to do is you need to right click on this and make it unique, but then you can edit that text. And this one would be sliding windows horizontal right here like this. Well, now we would just add any horizontal sliders that we had. So say that we had a Marvin horizontal slider. Let's see if I can find one. Like this glider window right here. And it, it's in your project model, right? But all you have to do is just pop this up on a separate window and just do a control C, control V right here. And now you've got this in here and you've got a horizontal sliding window as well. And so you could just add another scene right here for horizontal sliding. Well, now you've got different windows in here and you can just kind of start building your collection. And you have to be a little bit diligent in making sure that you're updating this and bringing things in after every project. But I've found that really quickly you get these like really useful libraries of different models. And so before I really kind of upgraded my dynamic library, um, the file that I was using just looked like this. So it doesn't have to be super fancy. Like I like to apply a material to these so that they look nice. But notice how I've got the things in here that I would reuse over and over again, right? So I've got these materials that I found myself using a whole bunch. Um, I've also got different hardware finishes and I've got hardware that I pulled out of the 3D warehouse as well as things like countertop profiles, right? So I pre-created these countertop profiles. Well, say that I was to add a cabinet. So say that I was to just pick up maybe this cabinet right here and just drop it in. Let's say I did want to add a counter to it. Well, I've got all of these different profiles in here that I could just select and then just bring in, right? So the idea is if you reuse something over and over again, save it to this library so that you don't have to remodel it again. So then all I have to do is just drop this in here like this, place it where it needs to go, and I can just extrude it in order to have a countertop. So by saving these things that I'm consistently reusing over and over again, I'm getting rid of that rework factor that I usually have. And so I know building all of this out can actually be a whole lot of additional work. And so what I've done is I've actually built out a collection of dynamic libraries inside of the SketchUp Essentials course that are going to be available for anyone that has the annual access to the course. And basically what that is, is I've built out a cabinet library. I've built out a dynamic door library, and I've built out a dynamic window library that all kind of work and adjust so that they fit inside of openings and they dynamically adjust. So like these windows, for example, are an example of something um, that I've created where I can actually drop this in a wall. I've set it up where you can kind of like scale them so that they resize to your different wall thicknesses. They're not as complicated. They don't have as many options as like a flex tools or something like that. But honestly, most of the time I don't really need all of those options, but I do need something it's going to kind of indicate what my windows are and my cabinets are and things like that. So if you do want that, that's going to give you access to the dynamic cabinet library. It's going to give you access to my dynamic door 
library and it's going to give you access to my dynamic window library as well. So if you're looking for a resource where all of this stuff has already been kind of built for you, that's just one of the new resources that I've added inside of the SketchUp Essentials annual membership. Um, so that can save you a ton of time modeling in the future. So if you do want to check that out, uh, you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. That's actually on sale through, uh, I believe, middle of next week. So if you do want to check that out, you can get that for an additional discount. It's like 60% off of what monthly would be to go with the annual. Either way, whether you're into my libraries or you create your own, you really ought to be creating these model boneyard files. I just love being able to bring these in without having to do all this modeling rework. So uh, leave a comment below. Let me know how you're managing your component libraries. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.